Enugu State is referred to as the coal city for a reason. It was the epicenter for coal mining in Nigeria decades ago. The scars left by heavy machinery on the swathes of forest are still evident. Eleven kilometers away from the state capital, Mike Achu, a former coal miner, has agreed to take us to some mine sites in Onyema community. Once seething like a beehive, abandoned Onyema coal mines has become a shadow of itself. Now there, they hide. For that place, they commit atrocities. They are there. For decades, coal was a major revenue earner for Nigeria. Not long after expatriates left, the Nigerian Coal Corporation, NCC, took over operations and eventually folded in 2002. This heralded Nigeria's checkered mining history, in which host mining communities became pawns in the grand scheme of things. Since Onyema, Iva Valley, Ribadu Okpara and Obete mines in Enugu were abandoned, locals have had to contend with varying degrees of environmental hazards. If you, the, you can't do bore, bore here, do top coal. If you, if you do bore, because you do, you, 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 you not be enough to drink. Mining areas are dangerous for many reasons. They are prognostics for respiratory diseases, poisoning, and also blamed for poor air quality. A major problem at Unyama is the pollution of water bodies caused by abandoned mine drainage, AMD. The challenge does not stop at health issues. Civil societies and academicians in the environment sector are concerned that the city is sitting on a ticking time bomb. The warren of tunnels, if not reclaimed, may cave in. Done in Enugu was underground mining, which actually needs serious remediation and uh, to determine the extent of the mining, there is need for serious post-environmental audits to get the extent of the mining, because the mining was done on the ground. When the mining stopped, they just left everything like that. As a matter of fact, Enugu today is sitting on a time bomb. The possibility that the city may collapse one day instead. Because nothing has been done, the whole mining after it, everybody just left. As a matter of fact, you can't build a skyscraper in Enugu. Building any house above six stories is really a risk. It's a sink. Why? Because nothing, nothing to support the, the roof again. But when they are, the, the mine is working, they used to put something like... Um, what can I call it? Wood. To support the roof. But hence, the, since the, the mine has closed, nothing like to... Nobody is going is touching it. They're sick. Sometimes in the city, you just notice a kind of uh, uh, earth movement and it will collapse inside, showing that that place is empty. So those kind of landslides, I believe with time, if nothing is done, it will start happening inside the city, which is very dangerous. For most states like Eboi, Nasarawa and Plateau, surface mining is the most prevalent method employed by miners. This has led to flooding and loss of farmlands, the locals say. And normally in Ebony state, it has been a challenge to close a mining pit. So, because uh, you may finish mining and as a human being, you focus on the money made in it and not uh, the health of the community. So, because of it, it has led to so many 
and so many things like people falling inside the beat three brothers are being lost at one day because of open beat and then um, uh, there's nothing a minor to do if the people that has paid a mine out uh, have gone with their resources and abandoned the feet. So we now look at government because before the person will mine, government is involved. We now look at government to do something. Trees and vegetation have now given way to huge pits filled with water. Artisanal mining is the major source of livelihood for some communities in Eboyi, another southeastern state where granite, lead, zinc and other minerals are mined. This has been devastating to the environment. Mines closure is rare. Miners take a walk after mining without mine reclamation. The government has put in place policies to checkmate the activities but implementation and enforcement is still lagging. There's no way you will come to mine in our state without visiting the government. You pay some tax or some levies, then they will not permit you to mine. We pay to the state government, so, and uh, after paying to them, they will monitor, and so I would say in some aspects, but they used to, at the end of it, they will not uh, monitor the pit to know whether it is closed. Locals suspect mining may be connected to cases of convulsion that has led to the death of some children in the communities. And the one is the first one, it will happen. So, I thank God that we let her go to the teacher hospital. She spent six days there. For maybe we spent three days for emergency. Three days for what? Before the discharge. For my neighbor here. Tell us about the second. What happened? The person later died. What is the same conversion. Do you know, look at this thing? But the person later died. And me, they do water. We drink table water for our community. Because even the test they did to my, my child, they say the, the doctor recommends to, to, for the test that it's a bad water in the problem that we have there. Laboratory analysis of water samples collected from the borehole used by residents of the community, including Gloria and her family, showed that the water is contaminated. Scientific studies have also reported the relationship between consuming undesirable TDS concentrations in drinking water and the prevalence of cancer, cardiovascular and coronary heart diseases. Across the country in Nasarawa state, deep in the forest, we could hear diggers at work. They are mining for tourmaline, a gemstone. Series of interconnected pits filled with water can be seen. An official of Nasarawa State Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, Ibrahim Yahya, says low yield is not unexpected because when miners dig up these minerals, they inadvertently dump the minerals excavated on the top soil. This is called overburden, and it makes access to nutrients difficult for the crops. This pattern holds true for most mining communities across Nigeria. Mining activities stops without proper closure and reclamation. In Plateau State, many of such pits can be seen. What has the government been doing about reclamation? In 2017, the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, MMSD, which oversees the solid mineral subsector in Nigeria, 
pledged $5 billion to reclaim more than 1,600 abandoned mine sites across the country, some of which dates back to the colonial era. On the average, between 80 million naira and 100 million naira was estimated as cost of reclamation, depending on the size of mining site, according to Salim Adibuiga, an official of the ministry in 2014. The ministry projected that 100 sites will be reclaimed annually between 2007 and 2020. However, 12 years later, as at 2019, only 32 mining sites have been reclaimed, costing 2.39 billion naira. This is less than 4% of the projection. In most of the mine sites, of course, most of the time they do surface mining. You see water, they collect. Some people, they get drowned. This is on a daily basis. I could uh, uh, recollect some years back when even the uh, staffs of uh, SSS, State Security Services, uh, reached out to me, what are we doing with regards of constant cases of drowning? In a bid to revive the mining sector and unlock its potential, the Nigeria Mining Act of 2007 made provisions for sustainable practices in the extractive industries. Of particular importance is the creation of Environmental Protection and Rehabilitation Fund, EPRF, to arrest the proliferation of abandoned mines in the country. Years after, the fund is not operational. Interestingly, there has been a steady budgetary allocation for the reclamation of abandoned mines, but little has been seen in terms of value for money. Analysis of the ministry's budget showed that not less than 2.43 billion naira was expended on abandoned mines reclamation-related activities between 2015 and 2020.